Hey there, welcome to the channel, y'all. If you're watching this, it's because you're considering buying a Tesla. Uh, maybe you're just curious about the car and the price. You've heard good and bad reviews, and so you want a clear and simple take, or maybe it's 2 a.m. and uh, this video was recommended to you after watching three hours of whatever YouTube recommends to you. Whatever the reason, welcome to the channel, y'all. I'm Easton. And while I primarily upload podcast episodes, I occasionally chime in on some things I know about. Like, for example, I'm a flight attendant, so I do a lot of flight attendant videos. And also, in the last six months, I purchased a Tesla. Now, I should clarify that. I, I leased a Tesla for two years. I was going to buy a Tesla, but then I realized I've never actually owned one. I've, I've driven some here and there, like uh, when I rented a car or I drove my friend's Tesla. But I've never owned one, so I wasn't sure that I would absolutely love it. Also, leasing it was a, a cheaper option, and also it was kind of like a, a trial period for two years. So I went ahead and leased the Tesla. It was like 5,000 uh, down, and then it's about 950 a month. It's crazy expensive. Honestly, I can't afford to do much else. I'm probably gonna end up living in the Tesla at some point. But in this video, we're gonna quickly go through pros and cons of owning a Tesla, and is a Tesla really worth it? Let's dive in. Let's start with the pros. Number one, it is the smoothest ride ever. All you really need is one pedal because Tesla has this regenerative braking. This means that when you let your foot off the accelerator, it automatically slows down. It, uh, it uses that kinetic energy and it sends it right back to the battery. You really don't use your brakes that often at all. So your brake pads on your Tesla are gonna last way longer than brake pads on a gas powered car. Now, truth be told, there is a learning curve also to only using one pedal. Now, of course you can use your brakes, but when you get used to uh, the automatic slowdown when you let off the accelerator, you only ever really use that one pedal. And if you're sitting there thinking, wait, so, so I have to kind of get used to the car coming to a, a, a halt like that every time I let go of the, the accelerator, I, I hate that. And hey, you know what? Truth be told, I understand. When I drove my friend's Tesla before I ever got mine, um, I, that actually deterred me from getting one. I was like, ugh, I hate that so much because I was so used to, if I needed to slow down, I'd take my foot off the, the accelerator, the gas pedal so quick and go to my brakes. But you get used to it. There is a learning curb. It took me like three days to a week to kind of get used to it. And now I freaking love it. As you can see in this video of me just kind of driving around town, I never actually touch my brakes. And when you realize how often, like in a gas car, you go from brake, gas, gas, brake, brake, gas, gas, brake, over and over and over, and how often your feet kind of switch, 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 it really is incredible to only use just one pedal. It's, it's, it's really amazing. But if this makes your tummy hurt and you think, oh no, I hate that. Nope, not gonna do it. Tesla also does come with an option on the screen. You can change the settings where you can kind of mimic a gasoline car where you kind of roll to a stop. You have to use your brakes more often. There's also that. Number two, there is such little maintenance on this car, almost none. I've had my Tesla for nearly six months and I put about 10,000 miles on it. And as far as maintenance goes, the only thing I've really had to do was obviously charge it. And I, I, refilled, I refilled the uh, windshield wiper fluid once. And of course I wash or clean my car. But other than that, there's, there's no oil changes, no transmission noises, no random belt sounds or belt snapping. It's just the best. And because I mentioned it, I have to say it here, with no transmission, that means that when you go, you go. There's no shifting, there's nothing to Nothing like that, it just gone. It's like a rocket blasting off. Here's a quick little video of what that looks like. As you can see, it's incredible. I go, you, can, you can't really tell, but they, it's amazing. It's incredible. It's an experience you gotta feel. Number three, charging is cheap. At an EV charger, uh, which is pretty a pretty basic charger that you can find in most big cities, costs about five dollars to charge from let's say thirty percent to eighty percent. I'm giving you rough numbers, but just kind of a a way to think about it, um, kind of a frame of reference, if you will. Now, while this is a pro, the con is. It's about six to eight hours uh, to charge depending on the type of charger you go to as well as the output of the charger. We'll talk about that con later. As you can see in this video, uh, I'm charging actually at an EV charger right outside of a Marriott and uh, it, it does take an adapter, but the adapter comes with the car and it's, it's going to take like all day to charge this thing. But at a Tesla supercharger, it will, it will charge in 30 minutes or less. I usually go to charge when I'm at like 20 or 25% left and I go up to 80% battery. Now it takes about 25 minutes each time. 
And again, it depends on the supercharger you go to, how many people are sucking up that energy around the stalls. But the superchargers, as you can see in this video, are typically located in like a Target mall, anywhere you could go to fill the time it takes to charge. You can just sit in your car, blast the AC, watch YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, get on your, your, your computer, whatever you need. It's a pretty great experience, but it does take some time. But it is, like I said, pretty cheap, usually around $20 or so, maybe $15 um, just to charge up. Number four, self-driving is incredible, but I won't spend a lot of time on this point because not everyone's interested in self-driving. So let's just make it a quick little uh, note here. It's a package you you, uh, you got to add onto your Tesla and you do it through the app. It costs about, I want to say 15 grand extra. Actually, I think Tesla moved the autopilot into a subscription model, as I can see here on the Tesla website, uh, charging roughly 199 or so a month for full self-driving. Uh, it'll tell you up front in the app as you design your car. Um, so make sure and do your due diligence. And if you want to add that, you can. Uh, here's a video of me self-driving. As you can see, it's so much fun. You do have to kind of um, tug at the wheel a little bit or touch the screen. Let it know that you're awake. The rumor out there that you can lay back and watch Netflix as the car drive you drives you, it's just not true. Number five, Tesla takes care of everything. You design your Tesla in the app, right? In the Tesla app. You put down $250 to reserve your, your car and it takes Apple Pay, which is pretty amazing. Then when it comes time to get your car, you pay for it through the app. It gets delivered to a Tesla shop near you. You go pick it up, you sign some papers, and you're good to go. You drive off the lot. You can finance through the app. You can you can pay whatever amount is necessary through the app. Everything is through the app. Even the key to the car is the app on your phone. That's it. They do give you a key card to use, but I never carry it. Looks like this, um, and you can just kind of tap it and then the car starts or turns on unlocks for you. There's really no start or stop. It's always kind of on. But like I said, I never use it. I just carry my phone and in six months, I've never had an issue with that. And if leasing, because I can only talk through experience here, Tesla handles everything for you, even down to the DMV. Now, of course, this was done in Georgia, so I don't know about other states, but I would assume they do the same thing. I went, I picked up my Tesla, I drove off the lot, and then a couple days later in the mail, there it was, my registration and also brand new plates for my car. And honestly, avoiding the DMV is probably worth the price of the car in itself. I, I hate going to the DMV. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, but I, I really do hate the DMV. Also, you can purchase insurance through the app. And when you go to a supercharger, you just grab the supercharger, you stick it in, and it begins charging. No card necessary, no hassle, because you guessed it, it's all through the app. It's just a, it's, it's a seamless experience, pretty amazing. Now there are many more pros, uh, but I promise that this video wouldn't be crazy long. And just to sum up how the app is basically everything. As you can see, I'm going into my climate. I can go ahead and pre-cool my car. Um, you can preheat it. It's got everything from controls to location, uh, charge stats, upgrades. I mean, you can actually make your car faster by purchasing an upgrade through the app. Uh, it's just got everything, as you can see, an overview. You can design your own custom home screen on the app as well. I just can't, the app is everything. And before we get into the cons, just a, a quick random pro, and this is, this is tiny, but summon on the app, it drives itself. Uh, it's it's called Summon on the app, and you can kind of, uh, you can make it come to you, the car itself, without anyone being inside of it. You can make it go forward or backward. And uh, as you can see in this video, uh, I my my shoes were actually a little muddy, so I, I didn't want to get in the car because I just cleaned it. And so I just simply summoned it to go forward and go into my little parking space here. So this is a tiny, tiny pro. Um, and honestly, it's, it's not worth the car, but like, what a cool little perk, right? All right, let's dive into those cons. Number one, long road trips are longer due to charging. This is true. So let's just be real. Let's call it what it is. It's nice to be able to drive that nine hour road trip, stop for five minutes, fill up on gas, get some snacks and hit the road again. With a Tesla, that five minute stop is more like 15, 20 minutes at a time. Now, a Tesla Model 3 dual motor uh, will go around 340 miles on a single charge. But of course, that's 100% to 0% and you're not going to drive until you hit 0%. Please don't do that. You can't coast in on fumes like you can with a, with, with a gas car. So don't even try it. I usually begin charging at like 20%, 25%, as I mentioned earlier in the video. So you're never really going to go 340 miles at a time. It's going to be more like 300 miles or, you know, 280 miles at a time and then have to stop to charge. So 
road trips are longer. It just what it, it is what it is. Number two, this is the elephant in the room. It's the cost. It is expensive. All right, Teslas are expensive. Uh, that's why people say, oh, you got the Tesla money. There's a reason for that. Now I'm a big believer in working more to live within the means that you want over uh, basically cutting back to live within your means. Both are great, both take discipline. It just takes discipline in different ways. Now I pay 950 a month just to lease the Tesla. That doesn't even, that doesn't even include insurance. It's 950 a month just to lease the Tesla. It does have you know the autopilot on it. It's got all that good stuff. It's a dual motor. Um, it's a Model 3. It's probably not smart to pay that much because let's be real, I can't afford it, all right? I can't, but I just work more to be able to pay that. Totally destroys me financially. So the cost is crazy. You got to kind of weigh that against uh, the lack of oil changes, the, the lack of maintenance that really isn't required on this car and the overall ease of owning the car. It, it's got to be up to you and your specific situation. This is just to let you know it, it is expensive just to buy the car outright, which you probably already knew that. Number three, Tesla superchargers can take forever and be kind of chaotic. And I don't mean take forever to charge. No, I mean, take forever to get to the stall to charge. No one ever told me this when I bought the Tesla and I never expected to ever go through it, but there's no real system for who's next in line. I wish Tesla would actually invent that where you pull up and you can select on the screen, I'm, I'm next in line. It says, all right, stall number three. Um, and you are second in line for stall number three or whatever. But when you go to charge, there can be one Tesla waiting or 10. And when I say waiting in line, what I mean is they are scattered all over all like basically pointing at the direction of, of the stalls and, and you can inch forward just a little bit because you're like, okay, I think it's my turn. And then someone zooms right in because they're mad that they've been waiting longer than you or they think they have at least. There's a lot of honking, there's a lot of yelling. It, it's chaotic and honestly, it's genuinely stressful. Now, this doesn't happen all the time. All right, sometimes it's really nice. You pull up, there's eight stalls, there's only seven people, right? And so they all go to their stall and you're the eighth person, you slip right in, everything's fine and dandy, but it's, more often than I'd prefer that you pull up and there are like eight stalls, they're all filled, and then there are six other Teslas just scattered around and you're like, I guess I'm seventh in line, but then three more Teslas come in and they think they were here before you, but like, no, you were just on the other side of the stall. It's really confusing, it's a lot. Um, they're all vultures just waiting around the charging stall. It, it's not a great experience and hopefully it will get better, but that is a con. Number four, the battery loses power throughout the day and or night when you're parked and you're not using the Tesla. Something that doesn't happen with a gas car is that when you park your car for the night, all right, and you are on full, you go to bed, you come out and you drive your car the next morning and you're still on full. Well, with a Tesla, you could go to bed with 200 miles left till empty and then come back out the next morning and now you've got one 185 miles left till empty or 75% to 70%. The Tesla can read in two different ways. Uh, it reads miles left or battery percentage. I prefer miles left, so I'm trying to talk in both ways. But this is a little irritating, right? Because it's not exactly a deal breaker, but it is a concern because even in cold, it's in colder environments, the battery loses more power. So if you don't have a lot of charge left, if you're at like, let's say 30%, you're like, I'll charge tomorrow. And then you go to bed. There is a scare that it's like, ooh, can I even make it to my destination to go charge? You can add a, a, a charger at home, but I'm not gonna cover that because that's also expensive and you may be wanting it at an apartment. So I, we're not gonna cover that, but this is, a, this is a con to the battery losing power. That doesn't happen with a gasoline car. And y'all, these are just a few pros and cons to consider. Of course, there are far more. I hope it helped with the situation, whatever the reason you're watching this video. Just trying to make things simple because let's be real, things are too complicated these days. Bottom line is this though. Just so you know, I love my Tesla. I've heard the overall hate. I've heard the good. Now I've experienced it and I can say the worst part for me it's the price. The worst part for me is the price by far. I wish that would come down. Um, but until then, I, I still think all the pros outweigh that, that big con there. Hope you enjoyed the video, y'all. Make sure and subscribe. Really appreciate you sticking around. Also, check out my podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. It's everything with Easton. Also, you can shop my Amazon store. In the description below, there's the link tree link. Follow me on Instagram at Easton Explorers. And y'all, I'll talk to you next week. God bless.